right, everyone, you have made it to the correct stream. You made the correct choice today, I do believe. Today. Very cool to speak with Neil again. Uh, we're going to go over some good stuff. We actually had originally this was going to be a LP play on Pulse Chain stream with uh, Crispy, uh, but we had to reschedule to next week. That's going to be a good one as well. So next, also next week, one week from today, Neil will be back, but with Crispy Man. We'll be talking about LP stuff. Uh, we'll probably get into a little bit of that stuff today as well. Today, too, as well. But um, yeah, I'm excited. Got some cool topics to go through. Uh, talk about some some of the big big events and stuff happening on Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain value. I always like to bring that out. Neil's one of my favorite. Neil's one of my favorite value on Pulse Chain. Where does this stuff come from? Like, what actually gives it value? What are the ways we could increase increases in value or decreases and stuff like that too? Bridging, all that type of stuff. Uh, anyway, it's got a lot of cool stuff to go through. Let's say hi to the chat real quick, and I'll bring him in. Uh, I'll go for about an hour uh, today, so it'll be jam packed as usual. I'm pretty sure. Jay, everything. How's it going? Crypto Toad. <laughs> I always want to say Toad every time. Not, I don't know why I can't just say Toad, but Toad because of the uh, M, uh, Black Sheep movie. <laughs> What's up, man? Welcome, welcome. Muscles have entered the chat. What's up, Chad? Of House Donner. How's it going? DJ Bomber. Welcome, welcome. Red Squirrel, number five. Not number one. He's number five. Lunacy Point. Welcome to the show. Without further ado, welcome back to the show. Nail for T shares, everyone. Hey, Max, hey, thanks for having me again. Yeah, we're all clapping. Clap noise. <laughs> Cue clap noise. Yes, I need to get one of those clap, clapping sound things. Right. Yeah. How's it going, man? How's uh, how's uh, Pulse Chain treating you? You're looking good today. You're looking sharp. You got the nice Thank co college shirt there. Yeah. Thank you, man. Just uh, try to look a little, little presentable before I go on stream. You look very founderly. You look very founderly. Yeah, I could be wearing my tool belt and all. That'd be kind of funny, but... <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. boy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been... Just We've been busy and doing well, man. Pulse Chain is, uh, I mean, though the price is maybe down a little bit in the market, uh, there's a lot happening in the background, and we're we're excited to work with a lot of people, doing a lot of things. Uh, I've been I've been really busy the last couple of weeks, just putting together things, working on stuff, product testing, and everything. So it's a, it's it's been something else. Yeah, there's, I mean, just so much ups and downs in Pulse Chain lately. Oh, we were riding high for a while, okay, and then you know we had. Sackwall doing all the stuff and 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 now it's almost Bitcoin happening time. And and I, I guess too this month, I've talked about April, a lot of a lot of major events happening, 50 weeks to shake out the weak hands, you know, if you if you're going with that uh, scenario as well. What what makes you know, what do you think about uh, pulse chain and crypto in general, April, May? Like what does it feel like to you right now? Um personally, because of what we're building right up is being built and being uh, uh, you know deployed on chain very shortly, I think it's gonna do well, at least pulse chain will. Um, what the Bitcoin halving does and how the market reacts to that with if there's a if, if we go through another dip like we normally do, then that's one thing. But we never had the ETFs before. So therefore, we might not have the dip that we're thinking. Who, know, who knows how the market's going to react? That's a really an unknown uh, variable that we just had no way to, to have any uh, historical data to you know, make a, a suggestion. So it's really anybody's, anybody's guess, really. So it just depends on. Uh, what the what the market decides to do with that, I would say though that um, I, I'm I'm I have, I'm hopeful and uh, despite what Richard's going to do or the OA whoever is controlling the the sack wallets um, at this point in time we have to look to the future and it's really up to us to build and make the chain uh, uh, I guess innovative and uh, desirable for those to come over from Ethereum and other chains to uh, a, a transact and you know uh, interact with the DeFi products we're built. I think we got more than enough projects that are just doing really cool, amazing stuff. Um, I mean, I've been having, you know, of course, I've you on a million times as well, talking about Tetra and a bunch mm -hmm. of different projects. And uh, I'm going to have uh, GIF, GIF on and uh, Kool-Aid on as well. I'll talk uh, a little bit more about Pulsar and the GIF tokens and stuff, which I think are the permeable tokenomics. Again, I'm in it for the tech and the price performance. And there's some very interesting things going on in the community uh, as far as that goes. Not just a bunch of recycled narratives and, um, and we have, I feel like we have all the forks, um, all, or most of the forks that we need for a lot of the products that have, you know, that are on Ethereum that are doing really well. So mm -hmm. that's cool. We've got a few more coming. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's easy to get lost in like, oh, the price is not where I wanted, where I expected it to be. I had those expect mm -hmm. like it's easy to get lost in the price. But if you really look at like what's happening on the ground level and what we'll get into too with value, the whole value prop of pulse chain and where it comes from it's so easy to be like, Oh yeah, this thing's it's still good. We're, we're still good. Everything's still good. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to, to do that. Once you look beyond, Oh, the price is just, it's red today or it's green today. It's, 
looking beyond that is very important. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I just, I think people, they're so, they're very short term minded on a brand new chain that has not even stretched its legs yet. If you think about what Richard could do with the, the sack money and stuff. So, I mean, let's, let, let, it, let us you know, mature, get things built. You know, all the bugs worked out. If there's anything in the background that they're working on, you know, RPCs and servers, and the court case and all that mess. It's a, it's a lot happening for a young chain. So, I mean, Ethereum didn't experience this. They didn't know SEC bothered them when they launched. No. So, I mean, how, I mean, it's, it's really almost a, a, a bad uh, comparison because even though we're, or any other of these EVM forks, right? No, the SCT, SEC didn't attack them when they launched. They was able to do multiple axes at launch. For whatever reason, we we're stuck in this position so we just got to grin and bear it until it's over we keep getting gate kept in one way or another <laughs> it's mm -hmm. incredible how it just we keep rolling but we're rolling with the punches man like they keep coming we're like i, th I didn't hear no bell it's like the, the south park meme uh, mm -hmm. i've been using that lately every time i see some something where it's like oh this thing happened and it's it's taken as negative but like everything's still fine i'm like i didn't hear no bell doc let's let's keep going we got this like a, mm -hmm. a punch drunk fighter we we, we continue on <laughs> right um, you know, where, where did, where, where did Roman Holstein, we talked about this a little bit before bridging and otherwise, but when you're looking to see is pulse chain as a network increasing in value or not, what are the different you know places you're looking at to see that? And how do, how do we know these things? How do we know if we are getting more valuable or less valuable over time? Yeah, well, the bridge is the key. So right now there's about $101 million worth of DAI, USDC, ETH and Tether on the bridge. Um, I just checked it before we got on stream. So <clears throat> that's currently available on the bridge, meaning that's the majority of the extractable value off the chain to um, to, uh, to to exits on off ramps like Coinbase and whatnot. OK, um, so that's the rea that's reality we were sitting in. And but not but that, though, is not only that's not only held in LP pairs, it's also held in private wallets, too. So whoever holds these these private amounts on Pulse Chain has it, so that's their money they can get out, and the rest is an LP. So, uh, probably dollar wise, I would say that less than half that's truly extractable from the chain at any one time, just because of how the the, 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 the bonding is on chain. So, um, you could probably get back fifty million dollars off chain if everybody sold at the same time, but then you have a price collapse and it's just a mess. Yeah, and are we mostly just looking at the bridge to see I mean, the stable coin number go up, or um, is it you know the the native stable coins? We, you know, we have CSD. We'll talk about CSD a little bit later as well. But what, what is it that I guess we went over again? We talked about this before. What are the pillars that make value on Pulse Chain? Is it the you know we have the bridge and stable coins, native stable coins. What is it that says okay, this is the value of the network? Well, the bridge and stables are the true really a measure of value even the, uh, the the stable coins that are are backed by cryptocurrency like usdl and, and uh, pxdc uh they again though derive their value from the assets that are collateralized against i.e pulse and pulse x which are then held in pairs with DAI, which is where the value comes from so that's where the true value is even you minted somebody minted a bunch of stables from one of the two protocols they would still have to eventually transfer back to DAI to get out that's just that's just the, the, the mathematical fact. I mean, you can't get it. You can't get away from it. So you can't mint stable coins from anything, even if you have assets, uh, collateral assets, because once you redeem against those assets and you sell those assets for DAI, then asset loses its value. So let's say somebody minted say twenty million USDL tokens, and then they went and, and swapped them for Pulse, and then they swapped them for DAI. Well, that Pulse is eventually going to go down because they you know, in value because they're taking all the DAI out of the pools. You see, so it's just. It's just one of those things that if there's a rush for the door, the price gets hurt and then your prices suffer. So the bridge is the thing. And that's what gives all the value to the chain. So until we bring more money through the bridge, there's more money sitting on the bridge or other bridges, not maybe this bridge, but all the bridges that eventually hook the chain uh, or through other means like, you know, coast and stuff. Once they get you know, turned back on, that's the only way you're going to bring value and have lasting value on the chain. Um, so, so why is that for, for us, you know, is that, is it like that for other chains? You know, it's obviously for Ethereum, it's a different story, but like, is this, is this kind of like the bootstrap? Is this to be expected to bootstrap type of thing? All our value is most of our value is sitting on the bridge or what do you, I mean, what do you see us 
going into after this? Is it kind of like, okay, Richardson in value, one thing, and then how do we get like native value, you know, from, from there? Like, what is the, what do you see? Well, native, va- well, native value shared through liquidity, right? So if you think about the, the, the two, the, the biggest LP pair in, in dollar terms is the Pulse Pulse X pair, right? It's got $53 million of liquidity on Dex Screener and V1. All right. Well, that's great. But, but the, technically, though, that value, that 53 million, it comes from the pairing of with die in the Pulse Die, Pulse, Pulse X die pairs. So you add all that up, and that's where you get your value from. So it's not realized value. It's just value, you know, um, in, in, I guess, it's, it's, it's just value through the, the bonding. That's where the value is coming from. So people can rely that they can trade Pulse or Pulse X and vice versa uh, in a dollar term, you know, mindset, even though the ratios are what they're trading. So that, that's just how you get to think about this stuff. And at the end of the day, though, all that comes to the bridge, it sits on the, the bridged assets. That's where this value is being you know, sustained from. Just like we saw the number slowly go up in overall TVL of the chain as you know, last year when we start, when we launched, as Pulse Chain launched, we saw the value slowly pick up, slowly pick up as the money came in. And then it went down when the money left. It's just that simple. So what are you looking at to see? I mean, is there things other than the bridge number go up to see, you know, how Pulse Chain is progressing to, or, or per, yeah, progressing towards more of a native value proposition? Like, what are we to look at for that type of stuff? Well, I think as time goes on, as people stay on the chain more and bring a lot of the liquidity, it stays within the, the, the pairs and they work within DeFi protocols and lock up tokens and all these things, like through liquid loans and power, and power cities earn, you know, uh, value is locked up. There's no doubt about it. And that does help. And it does help the chain's overall liquidity and it's took TVL over, overall. And that, these are things that we want to see. We don't want to see a dead chain. We want to see a lot of value locked up and people using these, these protocols and these tools, uh, no matter what they are, um, whether it's just even just providing liquidity on, on the DEXs, whichever DEX people choose. And these are important uh, uh, factors and important things that people need to uh, you know, experience and see and have confidence in. So when they come to the chain, they know that they do buy a token, they can have enough liquidity to trade through without having a lot of slippage. And that's what you really ultimately want is tons of value, you know, thick, thick liquidity pairs. So there's less slippage so you can trade and move your money around and use uh, these DeFi tools and services that are available on the chain to, you know, increase your, uh, your, your positions and your token count ultimately make money. A question here from Wild Rose is Pulse Chain dead? Maybe it'd be good to frame this one too. Like, what is what does dead look like? And if you and if we if Pulse Chain isn't dead, you know why 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 are we the opposite of that? For example, if, if, if Pulse Chain were to die, there would be no money on the chain. There'd be no liquidity, and the bridge would be near empty. You could that way you would say you would say Pulse Chain is dead if that was the case. But because we have money coming in. And we have a healthy ecosystem. Yeah, we got money going out too. There's no doubt about it. We're not saying people don't come come out and take profits. Uh, that's nothing, and there's nothing wrong with that. People need to realize their profits. But what you want is you just want more money coming in than leaving in the net. That makes the chain more and more valuable over time. And as we've seen, you know, I guess you're showing that here. The trades have gone up, and the values, the volume has gone up over time. Meaning, people, more and more people transacting. And they're using the tools and services as they're deployed on chain uh, for those transactions. And so there's other things coming that, you know, different forks or different things and like two, like two fucks and stuff like that. That's going to make even more value. And then we'll have automation services shortly. And then we'll have you know, other tools, and other other types of uh, DeFi uh, protocols that we launching that people can participate in and, and, and garner more value. So. Yeah, that's this pretty cool to see the on-chain DEX liquidity to between, wow, look at the juggernaut. 91% is in PulseX of liquidity. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it's hard sense. to see that. Yeah, it's, I mean, why would, yeah, it's, you know, we have a lot of good community DEXs too, but it's just hard to, hard to think of that. Why would that ever change? It's almost like that is the place where most of the Pulse, most of the PulseX is. Of course, we need other DEXs to enable different features and different, you know, you want to do V3 or whatever too, but PulseX being the mecca of liquidity on Pulse Chain, is there like, what is the case? Is there a case against that being a bad thing? Or is that always going to be like, okay, this is the place where trades can always happen between between assets? Well, it'll probably always be the home of Pulse and PulseX as far as those two tokens specifically, and probably a lot of DAI. Um, but at the end of the day, why? Why do? What would you use any other decks? Well, typically, 
uh, if you're using a DAX, uh, you get a better deal on your trades. And so some DAXs over time may have incentives and stuff like that that will allow you know people maybe use those DAXs and or provide liquidity there because they have a more incentive to do so. But let's say a, a typical V2 farm on PulseX for whatever reason. Um, or like say nine millimeter with their V3 options and stuff like that. So there, there's reasons for for uh, these other decks to exist. Obviously, people are trying to earn fees and make money as the founders and stuff. There's, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you know, Pulse. You know, just because Richard's obviously pumping his own thing it makes sense, right? He's put all the liquidity there because he has the biggest bags, and it's and it's great because always we always have a place where we know we can rely the thick liquidity to make a trades if these other DAXs just don't have enough liquidity to make the trades worthwhile. Yeah, sp speaking of just, you know, RH products and ideals and stuff, I wanted to bring this up, shared it with you a little bit earlier too, because to, it's telling you a lot of people haven't seen this. I don't think most people have not seen this list. And I think it's so important for people to see it because it's just, it really gives you this idea of, man, this was like two years ago too, just imagine you know, how it's evolved, what we already have, well, that's already done. Like, and we already have Pulse Chain. This is Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain uh, mainnet MVP, minimally viable product, just like what we need to get out the door, mm -hmm. like no extra features, any of that. All that stuff's done. Like we already have hex support, we already have bridges, we already have, you know, Pulse X, uh, which is kind of down here. That was supposed to be post MVP and funny enough, turned into the Pulse X uh, deal and all that too. A lot of stuff on this list, but Neil, is there anything that jumps out to you that is that we don't have yet that's interesting or um, you think anything has been like added that you think that the uh, pulse chain devs are, we, you know, we've seen privacy pool stuff kind of pop around. We've seen stable swap uh, feature maybe come to pulse X at some point too. There's been some rumblings on chain. What, 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 what on this list jumps out to you is interesting. Well, I would like to see that the, the tornado cash fork hex NATO, whatever it's going to be uh, uh, implemented <clears throat> for privacy sake, because, because of the way the governments are acting. Um, I would think, though, that Richard would be competing with other other like aggregators and stuff like, you know, Tetra and like Amos and stuff uh, if he has ag aggregator because we already have, you know, limit orders, too. And basically on our stuff is is, is, is chain is, is chain wide, not just through one DAX. So we will we'll ag end up aggregating through all the chains, giving you the best deal possible. Um, so it's like, well, what would you use <clears throat> the only one DAX in a limit order or would you use all the DEXs with a limit order? You know, which is better, which is going to be better, better execution, right? And those are the type of things that where, you know, this arbitrage opportunities would be, would be uh, more advantageous for people uh, as all as more DEXs come online and then there'll be more opportunities to have, get better deals and to arbitrage between prices on all the LP pools. And so, and that's, that's a very lucrative uh, place to be if you uh, have you know, software and solutions and automation that can do that for you. Yeah, definitely looking forward to all well, the DeFi tools coming up too. And, and uh, Tetra, I think it was Steve or somebody earlier was like, when when's Tetra staking? I I, uh, I used to ask that. Then I just said, when ready? I started saying, when ready? However, still eager to see uh, uh, Tetra and being able to run the run the, all the, the automation stuff. You want to, maybe you want to, yeah, you want to give like a quick Tetra update before we jump back into this one? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, well, um, the Omnis uh, updates are about to, about to be launched. Uh, they're, they're right around the corner, just like in the next couple of days. We'll have the, <clears throat> the next update for Omnis, which will have like the compound limit orders and stuff like that, editing limit orders, and all the features that Stu talked about. Um, then be one or two things. I think he posted in the main Tetra chat the uh, what's coming up next, and then um, then after that we'll have the final little bit of, of stuff that will be uh, added on to it, the liquidity uh, management uh, tool tool that we within Omnis, and uh, a few of the bells and whistles, maybe dark mode and all those things, you know, uh, but. It's just there's there's we're working on the final last little bit of integration with the DEXs and it's it's pretty complicated. I mean, pulling price fees directly from the pairs all every DEX, you know, within like just a few milliseconds, that's a lot of technology and a lot of work to do. And it's just a lot of coordination because every DEX is a little different. You know, balancer forks are different than V2 forks, are different than V3. So it's a lot of information to pull out and then for the code to know which is the best trade route to, to get, you know. From from an instantaneous you know price feed basically from the you know from the network so because we're not we're not putting an Oracle service or paying somebody else for a price feed this is this is, makes us different than all the other tools out there it's coming directly from the chain so when you get the price it is the price 
aggregated through all the DAX and you are getting the best view. Um, but yeah. that's that's that part. And then, as you see behind me, I'm a, we have a new a new uh, new a program called Tetra Labs that we've talked about in the past, but we're, we're actually putting uh, in, in place now. And we're now starting to uh, provide de uh, solutions and services and different DeFi tools for different projects who are coming to us and help them build out do front ends, um, you know, full stack development, whatever they need. If we have a whole list of stuff and you can contact me about it. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now the president of Tetra Labs, so to speak. <laughs> um, so that's, that's why you're looking presidential. Fun. I knew it. I right. Knew it. <laughs> Uh, but that, that, that's where we're at. So we're offering actual service to people for, for developers and people with just an idea. They want to build something, but they had no idea where to start. We can help them there too. So, um, so yeah, we have a lot of a lot of people, a lot of devs. We're, we're now uh, working with us to uh, get this stuff out and, and to create a lot of new uh, new projects and new uh, new tools for the blockchain. Just just on this list too, I think uh, one of the things that jumped out to me that I haven't talked a lot about is uh, it's a stable coin from my exchange I'm making. For context, uh, Richard talked about I think he had an exchange license in I, I think in Europe or something. Talked about it at one point uh, you know, a few years ago. Do you think we'll see? I mean, whether this you know this is before PulseX and all this stuff happened too, so it's kind of can't really take that for oh that's what that means or maybe things have changed. It's been a while, all that stuff too. But do you think we'll see a tweet from Richard one day be like appears a new stablecoin has appeared on Pulse Chain uh, on PulseX? You can trade it here. You think we'll ever see you know, RH you know say something like that? I mean, it'd be a, it'd be a function of the government regulations. That's exactly what he's going to be. I mean, this was done in two thousand one, right? This tweet came out. So yeah, late twenty twenty one. Yeah, so late twenty twenty one, right? That's two 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 and a half years ago, right? A lot of things are changing in the landscape, the SEC and all that mess. So you never know. Uh, this these things are really hard for us to know. He had a wish list. This is before he probably got served, so he had no idea what he, the legal hurdles he had to go through. Thinking he was good, now he's got to deal against her. And, which are Yahoo's up in Washington. So um, it's just, you know, it, it's hard to know. Even Richard is going to have to basically, you know, react to the, the world around him. He can only do what he can do. So that's it. That's I mean, we just, we just can't take these words for gospel because who knows? I mean, maybe in the tornado cash might, might not be possible if every, every you know, out, uh, outbound place is going to blacklist any technology like that. You can't use it then, right? I mean, that, that, that's what they want. They sure don't want privacy. So I can see them blacklisting something like that. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, these things are, I mean, I mean, a wallet, well, we have internet money. Do we really need another wallet? I don't know. He, he has not stopped talking about wallet. I'm, I'm pretty sure he even mentioned wallet again, either in the Christmas video or one of the, one of the last two, uh, videos or, or audios we heard him speak. I'm pretty sure he still mentioned the wallet, which I was like, okay, you're still mentioning it. It must, it sounds like it's still happening. Uh, even though we have community, that's what, you know, that's, that's a question too. Do you think we'll see, cause even on here, um, he talked about, uh, you know, Uniswap uh, V3 front end. He talked about uh, a few different margin trade. I mean, do you think we'll see stable swap? So yeah, there was a stable swap uh, thing they got forked the other day. People saw on chain, uh, which, you know, that's what, that's what PHUX is used for. A lot of stable mm -hmm. point execution stuff. That stable swap could be integrated. As far as I know, I, I did a little bit of research. It looks like it could be integrated into PulseX as a feature, uh, mm -hmm. just like um, I think Pancake Swap had done or made it able to do or whatever, do you think we'll see new RH products, platforms or features that will be like, I mean, even though he may know or may not, well, I actually talked about fame before. So I'm, I imagine he'll have some, like somebody do a survey of, of the products that are out there already. But do you think that you'd be like, okay, well, I'm launching my own product. Like you think even it even matters if community projects are launched as far as, you know, would they change his plans in, you know, in his mind? How do you think? Mm, I, I really don't think so. I mean, Arch should build what he wants, and it's up to the community to decide who, what they want to use. Who's which pro, which tool and service will teach you your money the best? That's, that's what it boils down to. Where can you make the most yield for your dollar? And that's where you need to go. It's just that simple. And so it's up to the community, these community builders who are building whatever out there to make their products uh, really, really good, and you know get some you know you know your product loyalty and treat their customers and their and, and their users well. And that's what you want, and so that's that's just straight up business. So if Ari wants to compete with fame and, and the PG ecosystem, he's, I mean, he's, he's got enough money to do it, but the question is who's going to use it and why, what benefit, how much more can they get? You know, that's the question that he, he'd have to answer and solve to get people to switch over, to use that in, in, for themselves. Even the V3 stuff, like we get nine millimeter. Do we need another V3 decks? I don't know. I mean, even Alex has one on this Hedron, on, on the Hedron uh, app he forked, 
don't think yeah. many people use it, but it's there. So, yeah. I mean, it, it's just these things. There's, there's plenty, but there's plenty of, of room though in, in the chain to have multiple copies of doing similar things. Now, I, for one, like a lot of DEXs because that's a little more opportunity to arbitrage. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. There's nothing wrong with it as long as these DEXs are you know, functional and do a good job. If you look at here, I mean. I mean, just thinking about that, I mean, for, for example, my my opinion is I don't think RH considers what the community does as far as like decisions he makes in general, as we, we might have saw that with EHEX and stuff, right? So <laughs> I don't think he, I think he appreciates a community building, but he's not going to stop <laughs> doing things that he think is, he, he wants to do because there's already product out there. My, it's just whether anyone likes that or not, I think that's just the way he thinks about it. That's the way I think he thinks about it. Um, but if, I mean, if you're looking as a, as a person, uh, as a person in the community and you're like, wow. That, or a new person, let's say just, you know, you're a new person coming to the community and Pulse X, all, you know, this year gets new, it gets limit orders. It gets, um, you know, still doesn't have the aggregation limit orders, or maybe it does. I don't know who knows about that, but it has limit orders. It has, you know, maybe it has single size staking. It has uh, stable coin swap. It has all these features. And they look at this list and they're like, wow, it's, and it's got about 91% of the liquidity. Like, wouldn't a new user's choice at least be like, wouldn't you imagine them going there first just because, hey, this thing actually does all the things I want now. Not, you know, their their opinion is going to be, it does everything they want because they never were here before when it didn't have those features. But if it has those features and it's got the most liquidity, it seems like that would have, you know, that would be attractive to new users at least. Well, it's, it's going to go out, it's going to boil down to marketing, right? Is RH going to market his own stuff or is he just going to build it and let people use it? Does he, is he out there actually every day, to, hey, come, come use Pulse X? I mean, it was done, he's tweeted more lately, but I mean, for a while, he didn't say nothing. He was silent. And all the other communities are building and you know, doing doing live streams, AMAs, you know, hosting stuff on Telegram, talking about stuff, building cool stuff. And Please, so, can, know, we, can, we, can we tempt you? Can we tempt you, Ari, to get back on Twitter spaces? Please, yeah, Neil, well, tempt him. Do it. Right. Well, uh, anything. But the whole point is, it comes on the market at the end. Ari may build all kinds of cool stuff. He may make Pulse Extra jam up awesome. On a technical level, at the end of the day, though, if you don't advertise, it's just by default there. Well, okay. But if, if somebody uses an aggregator like Omnis, it's going to go through Pulse X anyways to get the best deals. It's still, he's still going to get the benefit as far as the volume through it. That does not going to matter. Just, just going to use his front end. I mean, and that's the funny thing. And once we, people don't understand, once we have automation services out, we'll have these, these front ends and widgets, uh, these little widgets on these all these websites, people will need to go to other front ends. They'll just use what, whatever. They can use our front end Atlas, which will interrupt the entire chain, or they can just use, you know, a, a widget off of, of a website front end they like to use, say, you know, Power City, or whatever, which will automate a whole bunch of stuff. So you don't need to go to PulseX if you're using these aggregators and stuff like that. It just it's unnecessary because why would you limit yourself to doing limit orders only on one DEX? That's why that, that's why I'm saying I don't think he's, you know. It, it, the competition it may be there. He may have more more value and liquidity, but these use case and services, the tools, unless he's going to have a router that routes throughout the whole chain himself, and that's different. Um, which is but, which well, is interesting because he has talked. He did an awful lot of work on the auto router on PulseX. I wonder if there'll be some if it's possible to upgrade that to be like become some kind of like super super auto router where it actually does do aggregation. That that could be interesting. I but mean, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I, I think. Uh, it just reminds me too of Alex Ramosi, the phrase, uh, make someone offer, you know, they'd be, they'd be stupid to refuse. Yeah. You are out there. Everyone's out there competing for users, competing for adoption, competing for, um, yeah. Saying like my product is the best showing people the, the, uh, the value of using these things like Omnis too. Like you can literally do limit orders, uh, and it across different, uh, different liquidity pools and stuff with Pulse X and PHUX and stuff. So it's, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool competition. I don't know. I guess if, if I were founder of a platform in the community and I knew if I had something around and I may be competing with RH, it's kind of inspirational in a way. It's like, okay, what if I can make something so good that uh, people would use or would at least stay with mine? Maybe mine is, you know, um, the first mover advantage type of stuff too, as far as like mm -hmm. products that aren't launched. PulseX, I don't know. That's maybe a different story, but other stuff, uh, wallets and otherwise could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, wallets are wallets. I mean, you know, to me, you know, we'll use internet money, MetaMask, Rabby, whatever. It, it, I mean, it's just, it's a wallet. So unless you're swapping in the wallet, it, it's, a, it's a wallet. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, they have features, they're convenient. And the people who like do DeFi, they typically don't swap in wallets.
systems. They typically use aggregators, you know, that are, that are efficient and they don't cost a lot of gas. And so that's typically what I see with, with the wallet thing. Uh, but people have their own reasons, you know, security. I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe there's a reason for the, um, he's thinking about because of the, the MetaMask, how they host and stuff. I'm trying to come up with something that's a little more decentralized, which would be good. That's okay. So, yeah. I mean, to me, MetaMask is just a necessary evil for, for a lot of people. It's just one of those like, okay, it's, I treat wallets like my, like my bank account. It's like, okay, do I want to go use a small bank or a big bank? At a certain point, it's, it kind of got to be like, okay, do it, you know, I, I love everyone building stuff out there, but it's just so hard to, to be like, you know, all the videos, all the tutorials, all the things are for, you know, if you want to make it the easiest frictionless way to people get people into crypto, you don't tell them to go, hey, go to this like, you know, obscure exchange and do all this stuff. You tell them, go to Coinbase, buy, buy ETH and go do something with it. Like mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I hope the community is able to build, again, outstanding products where it'd be like, you're stupid to not use this. Like it's so easy. It's so frictionless. It's so amazing. There's so many benefits. It burns, you know, burns this, it burns, burns hex. Like I think internet money burns hex and stuff too. It's, it'd be, mm -hmm. you know, you're foolish not to use it. If we get to that point, man, like that, that would be a, you know, and, and who knows, maybe we'll get there with, with some of the community products. Maybe it will, they will be, Hey, this is the obvious one to use. Mm -hmm. um, shifting gears though. Um, CST is a stable coin, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's what it is according to, according to the website <laughs> and, and shout out to coast, man. They are putting, they are doing the work that mm -hmm. nobody wants to do. Nobody probably can do. They got the, they are, I hope they get super rewarded for what they're trying to do for pulse chain. But it has no, been a rough, rough past few days, right? Like, can you take take people through what what happened and why we're not at a dollar right now? Oh yeah. So uh, when their banking partner gave up on them, or whatever, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but their banking partner stopped working with them. Well, now you don't have a way to on or off ramp, you know, fiat into into coast. So they, everybody's now everybody who owns coast tokens are locked in the chain because they can't they can't redeem them. What are you going to do? So it makes the user sentiment and, and the, uh, the confidence go down. So therefore, the price goes down, even though they are working to get new partners and get it back up and have some redundancy in that area. So in case one partner fails, another one can pick up. Um, that's where we're at. And but that, that's the, the fickle nature of fiat and, and the, 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 the TradFi system. It's like this is this is a mess. These people, you know, every day the winds change. And they can turn on things on and off and you have no control. So you literally have, have counterparty risk dealing with these, these people because they're traditional finance, you know, uh, entities and you, there's nothing you can do about it, but I'll give, I'll give the, I'll give props where, where they do. You're exactly right. They're doing the hard work and for them to go uh, literally around the world to find partners to do this with and go through all the legal hurdles and licensing fees and just everything involved. I um, mean, it's, it's gotta be a paperwork and logistical nightmare. The team of lawyers and accounts they have to have on standby to work through all this mess. I, mean, I wouldn't want to do it. It did give me a headache. But uh, you know, yeah. once they get back on, we're all, we're golden. But and hopefully they, this will never happen again if they got enough redundancy in place to keep it. But then at the end of the day, though, all the feds have to do is to shut them all down. That, that's it. It's that simple. I mean, so we're there's still always going to be a risk dealing with this type of thing, whether we want to want want to say it or not. At least for you know, U.S. citizens, uh, other countries maybe not. But. U.S. citizens always you know, put at risk because of what the government can do if they ever decide to. And just to be clear for you know people using CST, it's not like this is not like a a uh, smart contract bug or a failure. It is just mm -hmm. a, a relationship that the platform has been put on pause for now because the banking relationship uh, they're they're trying to redo it to get you know, better partners or better ways to, to to do the fiat you know on and off ramp. And it, and this is this chart is just chart of human emotion right this is not mm -hmm. some failure of things it is a failure of the peg you know uh, just the chart of people saying oh i don't know like is this a good idea or not but the software itself nothing is nothing has failed other than people you know just just trading their their uh, ability to have confidence in a system that's on pause right now that's basically what's going on yeah that's exactly it i mean um and, and i know they want it when they turn it on, they want to be on and never turn off again. I understand who who would want this. Nobody wants this, right? And so that's the thing. It's just that with just with the amount of liquidity that's on chain right now, it's just not very much, you know. So therefore, they're trading below peg until new fresh capital comes in. So I, when they do turn on, I'm curious how many people who picked it up at eighty cents are going to go out and leave for a dollar. Yeah, my, that's, that's my that's my wonder. 
that ARB opportunity, right? So we had USDC uh, lose peg, went down to around you know, high 80s, 90 cents or so a year, year and a half ago or so. That was a big event. A lot of people panicked. USDC, the biggest, most trusted stable coin, all that stuff. And people made money. I didn't. I think even the, the OA, uh, they, I think they even made money off uh, trading trading some of that too and uh, all that stuff. So there, if, if things do recover and they do go well, then uh, people, these are, some people are looking at this as ARB opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. But, the, but you know, they're wild. Wilder things have happened too. Like, again, we, we appreciate Coast and all that. We hope, like it, we hope uh, that everyone who bought the, you know, we hope there is an ARB, this is an ARB, everyone buys it. They make money on the stable coin type of thing. They get back to business as normal. Everything goes well. Uh, there's always the risk of the other side of that too, but boy, like do you, uh, yeah, I think uh, if, if it were just some random team out there, not having seen them put in the work for like a couple of years now, I would uh, maybe think a little bit differently, but these guys, I, I hope they can get it because it's such a valuable, maybe talk about that too. Why is it so valuable to have this native stable coin on Pulse Chain? Like what, how does that help us? Well, I mean, it helps us get on and off without having to go through a centralized exchange. You know, so you, they, they'll, as a Coinbase or you know, Crypto.com, whoever people use, basically just, just milks you with fees. Then you get the Ethereum fees once you bridge out, right? If you take your, your DAI, you swap for some DAI, you bridge out. All right, okay, now I'm over here or USDC, even whatever, you're going to pay fees to move that around to get to Coinbase. And so that's, you know, um, that, that's money. You're losing money now. Whereas with Coast is you bridge out because you, you pay whatever the little fee is. It's like, it's very small compared to these others. And then you're in your bank account and you don't, you don't you bypass a lot more middlemen. And that's really important. And on the way in too. So you do your bank account, come in, get a deposit, have some calls and boom, you know, you have to Coast, Get some pulse and that now, you, now you're off to the races um, but they're going to have to overcome those to take a little time because just because of what's happened is the liquidity issue uh with between on the chain because right now there's a disparity so it's a lot of slippage people eat when they come in with the coast because the biggest pair i think is on on uh on fox right now and it's uh even still though it's like a three or four to one ratio of usdc to cst so it's there's still some slippage issues, but that'll that'll correct itself though as more money comes in. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's just gonna take time, and then but I'd say give them some grace, give them some time, and let them let them fix it, and we'll go from there. A yeah, question here from Bitchman three six nine. What exactly is Tetra Labs helping build for Naga Naga's Voodoo Balls launching soon? <laughs> okay, so yeah, all right. So Tetra Labs is doing this from pro bono. We're helping out Nagabo. Nagabo want to launch a meme coin. Not just a one-time meme coin pump and dump, which <clears throat> which you see mostly in the space. But um, so he was needing some assistance, and he uh, went to the SolidX and guys and Randy Larsky and that bunch, asking some questions and uh, some guidance on how to, how to launch a, 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 a meme coin. And they gave him some advice with liquidity and stuff because we've done a good job with a lot of liquidity amongst the, their uh, their index with Axis and uh, Fire and uh, Nope and stuff. And so uh, they agreed to basically bring uh, Naga into the fold, so to speak, with some liquidity. And we're helping as Tetra Labs with some technical development on the front end and a, uh, a, a, a token contract sniffer that's going to allow him to post on his uh, website uh, contract scams so people know what to look out for. So they can go to his website and say, hey, look, you know, this token's a scam. Here's a contract for this. This one's a scam. Oh, this one's got these bad things. And his, his, uh, I guess his shtick, so to speak, or his his reasoning is he's gonna put the voodoo ball curse on all these bad contracts to try and rip people off, like these honeypots and stuff. And that's, so he's trying to do a certain community service in this with this launch of this meme token, and it'll be launched like just like SolidX was launched and Axis and all these other tokens with with high liquidity, um, and uh, encouraging the community who participates not just to buy it and sell it, but to buy and provide liquidity and exit out responsibly. Uh, using like v3 liquidity and stuff hence the reason i did the video the other day for him. gotcha i just want to say that uh <clears throat> benjamin that's a beautiful avatar you got there it's like i i aspire to make thumbnails that that amazing that is that is very cool too and it is nice yeah wow that's I, I don't get to, i don't get to see a lot of cool new pulse uh pulse logos it's a beautiful one um do you want to talk about, uh, yeah, how about the state of, that's another thing on people's mind too. I think what, what is the state of uh, borrowing and lending right now on Pulse Chain? You know, a lot of stuff you were on the show last time with uh, like with Axis and we were talking about mm -hmm. uh, LL and 
Um, you know, we've got Power City, Earn Launch, and all that stuff too. What is what is interesting, optimistic? Like, what do you uh, what is good for people to know on like what's going on with you know, PXDC and USDL and all the stuff in, on the Pulse Chain right now? Well, I think people learn a really valuable lesson very quickly that this is not a free ride. And their participate the participation in their protocols show it. You can look at their their websites and how many vaults are open and stuff uh, compared to what they were. And people realize that this is not um, it wasn't a free lunch, so to speak. You are taking a loan. Your assets are at risk. It's a loan. Though you don't have to pay it back, you don't have to pay any interest, you still put your assets at risk. I just, for whatever reason, after all the things that were said, that people realized that, did not realize that they were going to be you know redeemed against so so often with the arbitrage arbitrage opportunities. And to be fair, there was never really a big narrative, though it was always a fact. Um, but it's also assumed that we were all be going up right now, not going down as much for a long time. So, you know, that's that plays into the, the understanding of how the protocols function, which are functioning as are as designed, um, at least to a certain point. So I don't I don't see that um, uh, the, the lending concept is is as a I, I guess it's not all as cracked up to be as people see how the nuts and bolts work. So therefore, people have to really take take stock of why they want to go loan, have a plan before they they take a loan out uh, and interact with these contracts. Because what are you going to do with the money if you if the price is going to go down? You can get liquidated. If the price goes up too fast, you could possibly get redeemed. Though you get some of your stuff back, don't get me wrong, it's still not an ideal situation if you want to hold your assets uh, or at least value your assets. And so I think people have learned and as they see the things move that these tools are there to be t used wisely how they're supposed to be used. Uh, so it's not going to be a get rich quick kind of, you know, you know, 10,000 APR type, you know, farm or anything like that. That's not, that's not how they're designed. I, d I just hope that, I mean, I hope people have learned the right lesson on this, and I hope it doesn't cause people just not to use the protocols at all. I think that's the delicate balance of like, mm -hmm. how can an average person, you know, we've been talking about liquid loans in Power City for, for like two years now, right? All the, went through all the mechanics, you did videos. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, had them on, I've had people on the show a million times talk about it too. It feels like we're not going to be able to learn that much more about the protocols themselves. Like we, I think most people get the ideal, they understand somewhat about liquidations, maybe not so much redemptions part, but the whole like, you know, never selling a very popular ideal, very like just, Oh, common sense. Why wouldn't you do that sort of deal? I don't, I'm not sure people are going to be able to understand much more. I'm just, I'm just speaking on behalf of like the common crypto person who's in the community, who's like, Hey, there's this tool. Maybe I sacked for it. Maybe I didn't. Um, but I keep hearing people using it. It's supposed to be great. I don't know if they're going to learn that much more about the mechanic side. I think they just want to use the tool if it's not going to, you know, not lose their money. The protocol is not going to lose the money, but they're not going to lose their money using the tool because of the liquidation or redemption or otherwise. How, how does, how do we strike that balance? How do we get people to feel safe using the tools and then also not have to be like this, you know, protocol DeFi nerd in order to use them properly? Cause if, if everyone has to be a nerd to use it, that's going to be 1% of the entire community. Like the, the, it's going to fall off a cliff if everyone has to be like this master using it. How do we make them feel safe using it and not have to know it, the ins and outs of every single thing? Or can we do that? Mm, I don't, I don't think it's, I, I really don't think these tools are for the novice. First of all, these are people who know what they're doing. They're taking calculated risk to use the tools. That's who needs to use these tools. Now, if we go do a 10 X in the next six months, these tools will have, will have a lot more use case. Cause then if we're in an upward trend for a while, you can put your money in, borrow against it, buy more, and, and do these type of you know rebuilding strategies um, <clears throat> to increase your positions. Uh, so I think that's that's the main use case really for them because in a downward market, uh, yeah, there's some there's some arbitrage opportunities and some plays you can do uh, with redemptions and stuff like that, and you know taking full out loans as the price goes down, get 10x more or 10 percent more, and all these things. Again, that's for advanced users and people who want to play the game and take those risks. Um, but really. For the average user, this is something they can use on the upswing in the market. It gets back up to the right, then they can use them with with less risk of uh, liquidations and, uh, and stuff like that. Now, redemptions always happen just because of the arbitrage, arbitrage opportunities. You can't help that. That's just part of the mechanics of how they, both these things work. But I would say for the average user who doesn't understand, 
Just just don't don't participate. If you want to do anything, get your stable coin, mark a bond, stick them in the, in the stability pool, and earn some earn some fees that way. If that's what you want to do with your money, you know. But taking a loan is is, is it's always it has risk. Period. You know. Yeah, I I think that maybe I guess the optimistic way to paint this is okay. We've had a lot of volatility. And I mean, there's been other things too, like uh, people weren't expecting to get liquidated at higher percentage ratios, you know, certain things that were like popularized or otherwise, you know, expected to be safe. Maybe they shouldn't have been expected, but you know, they were for a lot of people to be safe, did not get liquidated for, you know, that didn't, didn't work out for, for a percentage of people as well. It almost feels like it's, it's like a, you know, like a, like a well tool at this point, like bar and lending is almost for, Hey, you, you, better be in that one percent of people who really understand these DeFi protocols and and borrowing and stuff or you just you know uh you are one of the ta guys who who just wants to time the market and you have plenty of capital put in and you know, maybe you're not worried about losing it as much but I, I think restoring i don't know what do you think we just need a run up we need like the you know bull market for pulse chain at least to to be consistent before a lot of people will come back and be like oh loans that's just something everyone you know everyone does not everyone does so you know what i'm saying like easy to easy to get into instead of now it's like oh i'm not i'm not sure if i want to risk you know I, i'm not sure if i want to risk liquidation because what if the market goes down again that kind of thing yeah. well i mean again why people ask themselves the question why are you taking a line up in the first place why are you putting a potentially good appreciating asset up for up for collateral to take stable coins out what's the what's the plan what are you going to do where can you earn more in apy than the, the price appreciation of, of the asset that's that's really what it boils down to Unless you just want to get out and go buy yourself a car. Besides that, if you're just in DeFi to be DeFi, why are you, get to, why are you getting stable coins anyway? Where can you put those stable coins to work to give you a higher APY than the appreciation that's coming? You know, are you going to 2X your money if, if the price 2Xs? You know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is, but that's the re that's the question they must, must ask themselves before they interact with these type of products. You know, I mean, look at liquidity right now on Ethereum. Look at their numbers and see what's happening there and how popular it is in the beginning of a bull run on Ethereum. What do those numbers tell you? That's been around for two or three years now. How many people are using that product? Who's who's using it? Who's using it? Who's utilizing it? And what's their what's their price look like? What does their little token look like? It's it changed a whole lot, to be honest with you. And why is that? I mean, though it held up well when the depegging happening of USDC it held up great because it did its job, because that's how it works. But for whatever reason, it's not getting the traction like, you know, we have, I think we got more users over on, on Pulse Chain than they have in Liquidity in right now. But they're very similar in their performance and overall. So that's just something that you need to think about. Um, why? Because why are you taking a loan out against Ethereum? What are you going to go buy? You know, PulseChain.com. There you go. All right. Or, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those. Yeah, I, I think that the situation we want to avoid as much as possible is, you know, people you know, having bad experiences, right? I think that's, to me, I'm always thinking about, man, how can we, how can we talk about things that get people excited, but also, you know, let them know, it's not even let them know about the risk, but, but try to get them in a frame of mind to understand whether this product actually works for them or not. Like you said, what are you going to do with it? You're going to take a loan, what are you going to do with it? That sort of thing. You'll, you're going to do a little arbitrage. Okay. Do you understand if those prices go up and down? What can happen? You know, are you going to just going to stake the? I mean, I think a lot of people just want to get yield, right? There's like, hey, I just want to stake the loan token, or I want to stake the you know PXDC or whatever, and I just want to earn yeah. earn fees. But then, if you know, if I get liquidated or redeemed on, I'm going to stop fees fees not go anymore. That kind of thing. So, how to avoid like how to get excited about the product, and how to use it, and like actually solve problems for people or not, or be like, hey, this is not something I'm interested in, but like. Yeah, I think that's a delicate balance and I hope we get back to it. And I hope the last few weeks hasn't, it really, you know, gave people too much of a, oh man, like I don't want to put my phones at risk. I'll just go, you know, I'll just, I'll just put them in the LP or I'll do something else, which may or may not, you know, be beneficial either. You got a permanent loss. You get, everyone, I mean, we talk about LP and we'll maybe we'll wrap up on that in a minute too. LP is one of the things that I played with, played around with a lot at this point and sometimes I'll, I'll even find myself, I mean, from time to time, pretty often I'll be like, it's not even worth to do LP for these coins. Like the, either the APR is not there, the permanent loss risk is too much, or, you know, I'll try something out and be like, man, yeah, yeah. I made like, I made like X, X dollars in fees, but then 
maybe you know the price ran away i had to go back and buy, buy the other coin up before we, it's like all these you know you're kind of chasing stuff around a lot too so lp i think talking about it i'm almost more interested in i'm you know of course interested in making money via lp but i think thinking of lp as the uh you know like crypto cool later heard him put it this way like the grease on the wheel type of thing of like mm -hmm. it is so important to the ecosystem and it doesn't mean that you have to do it though it doesn't mean that it's going to be beneficial for you to do it. It doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money doing it, but having it around and especially some of the new stuff coming out around automation and all this stuff too, and LP plays that, you know, we'll get into with crispy next week as well. Having it, uh, knowing about it, knowing how it works is almost, you know, even if you're not going to use it, it's not going to be beneficial. Knowing how it works, is going to be super important to lay the foundations for you to understand the products built that are using it. Um, so yeah, I, I know, we talked a lot about LP and you know, about the SAC, SAC funds and stuff and how that could work out and all the amazing uh, moon math and stuff we can do there. But yeah, look, you want to talk a little bit about just LP in general and how this ecosystem, maybe it has a unique opportunity to really do some things that's never been done before with, with uh, liquidity providing and LP plays? Sure. I mean... <clears throat> There's really nothing new under the sun when it comes to LP on Pulse Chain because we were forking the same things on Ethereum. So that's really nothing new, so per se. Um, at the end of the day, when you ask yourself, why would you provide LP for a, for a pair of tokens, like say V2 liquidity style um, liquidity? But why are you doing that? Well, you hope you want to make fees. That's the only reason you're doing it, right? And you know you're going to suffer from permanent loss no matter what. So you ask yourself the question is if I am suffer, suffer from permanent loss, I end up with the other token or more of one token than the other. Am I really distraught? Am I hurt by it? Right. And so whatever the token, and that's, a, that's a personal thing. So if it's if it's hacks and hacks, if it's e hacks and p hacks, and you played that game, mm. you might be upset if you held if you, you provided LP. You get a whole bunch of e hacks. Right. That was a bad play. Maybe I like e hacks. Yeah. You know? Maybe I like it. Maybe I'm maybe well, I'm taking. Maybe but I'm but some people may have said, you know what, I'm willing it to yeah. do it because I want more e hacks. They're happy because they took their e hacks and staked it. They went to bridge them over and staked it. You know, that may be happy with it. That, that may be their play. That's fine. But let's say you have a stable coin in, in Pulse, for instance, okay? I'm providing liquidity. Well, if Pulse, Pulse does a 10X and I and, and they take all my Pulse, I know the stable's left in this LP pair, I missed the 10X. I'm locked out. It's kind of it's kind of a mess. But if it kind of runs sideways for a while, I'm getting a little bit of both. I'm earning fees. Maybe it's worthwhile because it's a high volume. So it, maybe it's worthwhile me to part my money. But the Pulse Pulse X pairs, they tend to kind of move together because they're bonded so heavily. And you can provide LP without really hurting your bag because it doesn't really matter which one you get more of. It is, the ratios stay within a certain range. So you're still going to be okay. And they're both going to run together, similar number of Xs. So you really can't get hurt too bad. Maybe that's a good play. Um, and you'll earn fees the whole time you do it. And then we have farms too in V1. So you can do it with just farms and you get in, you're incentivized by using, getting the incentive token to provide LP. Versus V2 on Pulse X, which is no, no, no incentivization, just straight up fees. Um, it's, it's a choice of the person. But things outside the farms, which are there for a reason, for, that's why Pulse X is so big because Richard's encouraging people to use use the farms to you know to make money, and that's why he buys an incentive token when he does when he brings money over because it, it makes that thing more valuable. Okay, those are th those are tools we have now. You have things like, you know, the Fox token, the emissions like that for providing LP. And then you got V3 liquidity, which you do concentrated LP, like with nine millimeter and stuff to get make even more fees. You'll have way higher APRs. The problem is, is very short ranges and you have, to, you have to manage that constantly to keep those APRs going. So there's nothing wrong with LPing if you know what you're doing. Um, but beware, though, of impermanent loss for V2 touch style uh, liquidity. And I, if you don't know anything, but you have tokens just sitting in your wallet doing nothing. And let's say you have a lot of hex lines, a pulse hex of pulse, just stick it in the farms. If you like them both, you'll earn money on top of your money and just sit back and enjoy. It may only be 14% APR, but guess what? That's a 40% you didn't have before by sitting in your wallet. And you'll still enjoy the price appreciation when it pumps. So that's kind of where I'm, I, I try to tell people, look, just think about it. Now, things like with what, the guys like Crispy and, and, and Axis and, and, and Randy have done, they have a, a coalition of guys that put together a team. They have all agreed not to sell or for sell very little. And they've done a really, really good job with their LP management on these launches. 
And that's the reason these tokens like Solid X and Hanope and, you know, a fire and access go up because they manage LP very, very well to where there's not just a bunch of it out there people to buy and dumping. And those who are buying it are holding it and providing LP and not selling it. And that's the secret sauce. And so that's how you can launch tokens and make the price go up without having to hurting the, the price by the sellers. Where a few sellers do sell, there's more people not selling and running LP. And they're getting out through like V3 liquidity and stuff. Uh, so they can basically DCA out without actually dumping on, on price on the V2 chart. Yeah, I think um, it's been interesting to see just the, the, some of the you know, different tokens and stuff launched. The LP management you talked about too. And if, if you were going to provide LP, so the farms, I think it's the interesting part where if you have, if you're earning an incentive token or, or something like that, that, you know, that the idea is to encourage you. Okay. Well, you're providing LP and you know, if, if things do go the way you don't want them to go with a permanent loss, hopefully that, you know, the idea was the coin would make up for it or at least make up for most of it, especially if you're not earning the fees, which is on PulseX. Um, but for coins that it's, it's like, for the coins that launch and you know are very volatile one way or the other what i guess what what are people thinking when they're going to provide lp when they see okay well this coin just went up about 100 percent. i just i have all the other side of the other coin and now it ran away from, like it's almost like you gotta there's a lot of management yourself to go on with the uh, mm -hmm. with where you place lp for for the more volatile tokens and that's that's like a big difference between the ones that are like okay they're kind of in stable ranges right especially on b3 well, yeah. Well, yeah. V3 is where you'd want to really manage it. You can do it with V2 to a point, but you'd have to make sure that you offer LP at, so once you make your initial purchase, let's say it's coin launches, you make your initial purchase. All right. So I got <clears throat> a lot of these coins got bottom low. Okay. And uh, if I provide LP, I'm more than likely I will lose the other side as people, you know, uh, one side or the other, you, you'll have, you'll lose more, right? And as people buy it up, buy it up, they're going to buy your coins and now you have no coins left, but you have all the other side pulse or whatever which may not be a bad deal but you've lost the price appreciation so that's not a good idea maybe but if you're in it for the long haul and don't care and you put just a small portion of, of you, what you purchase with lp you buy the you just buy the way the fees and just let them sit because eventually the ratios will, will move around and you can get out whenever you decide right v3 is different though because yeah i was gonna say on v2 that's it's much it's almost like a, way I think about V2 is like much easier to just like set it and forget it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And just like, Oh, I got the fees. I'll get the percentage of the pool when I pull them out versus V3 is, Oh, I'm going to get this high APR. I got this awesome range. And then boom, it shoots, it shoots all the way down. You're like, Oh now I got the other thing. Well, maybe you want it or not. And it shoots the other way. Oh, I got the other thing. I don't have any of the coin that may, may go up a lot either. That kind of thing. So it's like very, well, yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's a very time consuming as hands on V3 is. So you, what you got to do is not think about V3 is you never, a first one, you never put your whole bag in one point. You split your bag up in different bits on V3. So if you know you have a coin that's going to go up in value, you think, well, this coin just launched. It's probably got a good trajectory. I anticipate whatever, 1 through 5, 10x, whatever it is, right? Um, then what you do is you split your bag up in several things. And you, ha you have the asset. You put it down in lower levels and you just move on up in different tiers. And then as the, the token appreciates and people buy up your, your tokens, you have the other side. Then now you have something later. You have, now you have the pulse, let's say, and you're, you're holding the pulse. You're waiting, and you see the price start to go back down. And you put your pulse below it. Now you can buy it back at, at, and, and offer support, which is really important for LPing uh, for the price. So as the price goes down through your support level, you have a buy wall. You buy the tokens with whatever LP you put in. Now you have more of the tokens. And you can put those up even higher if you can anticipate even higher gains. And this is how you manage LP when V3 with a group of people who have a lot of, who aren't interested in selling, they can push the price up. And this is how Axis and, and Randy and them are doing all this, is they're just not having a whole lot of liquidity at places and forcing the price to move up to where the liquidity is at. Forcing the price to, to, to be, you know, the token count price in dollar terms to go up. And it's, it's, not, it's what Richard, Richard did with Hex, same thing. That's why Hex went up the way it did. It was a perfect LP management chart. And that's how they learned it. Richard also feels like an advanced user for sure. So everyone mm -hmm. listening, advanced users. Like, I don't know if you, you remember that, that they, they did a stream and they mentioned this, that most average person was locked out financially for playing these games on Ethereum because of the cost of gas. Richard could afford to do it. So he could he figured it, the, the process out. And like Randy and them said that they learned from Richard how to do it. And they've now successfully obviously copied the same plays 
with these tokens and they've been real successful. And I give them kudos because I think that's it's a brilliant way to do it. And it, it protects the price and people can still take profit responsibly without just dumping on everybody's heads. And so if you have more people being responsible and fewer DGENs, you can have a very, very good quality uh, token launch. And we're hoping to help you know, Voodoo Balls and Nagbo do the same thing. Yeah, just, just more on that point too. Do you think, you know, right now where we don't have a lot, a lot of people, not as many people as we 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 want to come into Pulse Chain and, and new money and stuff like that. A lot of different coins launching and plays and stuff. It's almost like the. Do you see it kind of moving capital moving around? It's like okay, you know, I have this coin. Oh, I'm going to get in this coin because it's launching instead of new money coming in. Oh, I'm, I'm going to buy this thing. So everything kind of grows together. Do you see it kind of shifting around, or do you think there's just plenty of money where it doesn't really affect much? I mean. I don't know. I, I had to look at the chart and see where the <clears throat> with, with the bridge uh, value, how much the bridge value has gone up over time. Um, there's money coming in on your own, but some leaving too. I'm not sure what the net is. Um, but in, unless there's more money coming in and going out, we're just trading money around. Right? That's just that's just a fact. I mean, that's just what the numbers are. So, but the bridge money keeps going up, and there's new money coming in, and people getting into whatever project there is, and that's great. And so maybe the yeah. coast gets fixed, we'll more money coming in, um, and. Maybe the SEC thing kind of goes, or maybe Richard brings his, some more of the sack money in to help boost it, things like that. Back up those Brink trucks. Mm -hmm. That I mean, I think that's the hopeful thing is like, okay, right now it may feel per, uh, player versus player right now, but boy, as soon as, you know, whatever whatever you know catalyst events happening or, or otherwise these major events and stuff going on, um, man, there's there's the, 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 it's it's like all these different projects and stuff can grow together instead of, you know, I'm not saying it's shifting, it's capital shifting around as much. I'm just saying, it wouldn't even be an ideal that would need to do that if you just had more people coming in who want to make money and hey, I'm gonna put my money to this thing. Let me see what happens. And everything just kind of grows up together. That I'm excited for like events that'll uh, hopefully kick that stuff off. But anyways, nail for t-shirts, everyone. Uh, are you not entertained? You not are you not valuetained? Have you not got valuetainment today? Shout out to Valuetainment channel. They interviewed Richard, did a great interview on that, by the way. Yeah. Uh Neil Burr. You like that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. That, that was a good one. Neil, where can people uh, find out more about you and all the amazing stuff Tetra Labs? Yeah, uh, Tetra Labs, you can reach out to me on Telegram at, uh, uh, I think, I'm, what my Telegram handle is. Uh, let me see. I don't even know my Telegram handle. No, every I single time say. I ask you this, you, you fumble the same time every time. And then I, I, I got to save you. I'm, I, save I, you. I, I'm at, at work for crypto on Telegram. So <clears throat> so that's that's my Telegram. But yeah, um, you just reach out to me and I'll, I'll actually hand you, handle any inquiries directly uh, for Tetra Labs. And then we have a list of things we offer. And then on technical level. And then once we get to a certain point, then we can go over some further details. And Stu's there with us too, um, but he's so busy building the background. He needs somebody to kind of be a, a face for Tetra Labs and just get out there and, you know, and, and just you know, deal with the people one-on-one -on -one until we get to a technical discussion. But yeah, the um, I'm there in Tetra Labs. Uh, we, you go to the, the Tetra uh, web uh, main channel. We have all the admins there if you have any questions about Tetra itself. And then you reach also, I'm also in, in, the, in the true DeFi room. Some also uh, we're helping them uh, with the P2X, trying to get it out. We're doing product testing. So it's it's on horizon very shortly. And uh, we got that. And then, like I said, we're helping Nakabo with Luda Balls. So we got, we got a lot going on right now. And then we're still building the Tetra Omnis stuff. I mean, it's just, I'm everywhere, man. I got so much going on. I can't probably keep up, be honest with you. But Every time I hear Luda Balls, I think of I think of the staff and I think of. <laughs> Oh well, look, okay. Naga's, Naga is a living meme. Yeah. His own words, so it's it's great, and we love it. I mean, we love we get along great, and uh, I look forward to working with him more. And um, I'll probably end up uh, live streaming when his launch happens too with him. Um, wow. So we've got a launch, launch right. party for him. Mm -hmm. I've got I've got Neil stuff on there. Work for crypto on Telegram. Work for crypto on YouTube because I ta I've tagged Neil in fifty videos, so like I, I remember this. And then Neil at Neil for crypto on Twitter, which I also remember when I create the Streamyard links. I have to remember it's not yeah. Neil for T-shirts, Neil for crypto on Twitter. Yeah. But his name shows up, Neil for T-shirts. It's it's a mess, Neil. It's a mess. What on what you gonna do with you, man? What am I gonna do with you? I know, man. I just I was all over the place when making all these things up. <laughs> Fast Abdul, what happened to the crazy '80s headphones, Neil? They broke. Fast Abdul, they broke. They broke. Yeah, those we're gonna kids old gaming headphones. <laughs> and yeah, if Tetra oh. does a ten thousand X, we're gonna get Neil a new headphone. We're gonna all chip in and get it for him. Right. Well, they wanted me to get some really, really big, big ones, not like the old, massive ones, but just as a joke. But <laughs> that would be funny. That'd be funny. Yeah, no. Tetra Lab themed. That'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe it'd be more efficient. You should get like a really minimalist one. That would be like the Tetra. Like, oh, do do more with less, right? Technology. I could get those little small, uh, those little glass, the little sunglasses that had in the eighties that the 
that old Narrows, like oh Max yeah, more remember that yeah. would be That'd yeah, be. those would be. I don't know, man. We got some good choices. We we'll get you some uh, some Google glasses, but in the form of like pilot pilot glasses, that'd look cool. I think you look good on that too. You look cool. <laughs> all right, everyone. That's all we got for you today. Sci vibe and five 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 five. We are out. I'll take care. <laughs>